In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about getting started in kind of the core elements that you're going to need as far as working with some pixel art. This spans across multiple software applications. However, I'm going to frame this in graphic scale due to uh, MMC 113 kind of starting out with that as far as the software package. Now, graphic scale is not the most glamorous of programs, and you have many other program options out there. So just to talk a little bit about getting started in general. As far as a software package goes, what you are going to want is you are going to want some form of zoomed window so that you can really see the details of the pixels, and you'll see that in a moment, but also an overall preview where you can see at the actual resolution of the graphic. Now, as far as graphic scales go, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here for a second. And up along the top here, this is where you have your main menu bar. As far as, for instance, you can make a new file, open a file, search, and you'll see some of the other items will come to life. Now also too, you have your main menu bar here as well. One thing I want to point out to folks is you can rearrange the interface. It might be a little hard to see here, but you have these bars at the end that I can come in and actually click and drag around as far as making the interface how I'd like to have it. Likewise here, looks like I actually have a third element down there. So if I grab this and bring this up, you know, I get uh, some more space to work in as far as the interface is concerned. Now the other element though that I'd like to point out is in that same vein, I can actually click and drag and move elements out of the way. Like maybe I want to have the whole workspace available to me. I can do that by just clicking and repositioning and doing more of a tabbed layout if I prefer. This is completely up to you. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and click on a new document. And when you click on a new document, what you're going to see is you're going to see a default. So let me go ahead and bring us over here. But however, you're also going to have this preset element here as far as file sizes and things like that. You could also just come in if you wanted, and you can actually enter in your width and height in pixels, and you can choose what type of color set that you'd like to use. Just to get us started here, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the default and say OK. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, let's go ahead and zoom back out and take a look at the entirety of our interface. A couple of things have changed now. Notice over in our Lupe window here, you can see as I move, you can see the X and Y coordinates changing. There are ways to set this up in programs such as GIMP or also as well, you can set it up in uh, Photoshop, etc. So this gives you a little bit more detail as far as drawing is concerned. So for instance, just to demonstrate, like if I grab the pen tool here, you can see on the preview window, kind of the full size there. But then if I begin to click and drag, you see how I get that super detail going on in the upper window. So now I could actually come back in and either touch up if I wanted to, or I can look at per pixel as far as how I want to do a layout. Like maybe instead I want to go and do some lines where I'm just clicking here. The other items too, just to point out as far as getting started is whether or not, and I'll go ahead and delete those just so that we have a clean starting point again, is up in the top bar here. I'm going to actually pull my image up. I'm going to come up to the bar here. There's a small section here as far as whether or not you want to have a grid turned on. But then what you have to do is you have to choose what type of grid. So for instance here, if I turn on 8 by 8, you can see here I have a very tight grid going on here. I could also come up here, choose 32 by 32, 
And then lastly also, if you need some help in your drawing with a mouse, you can actually have it so that you see whenever I turn on the snap, it's going and actually snapping the lines there. That could be great whenever you're working with certain types of graphics or you need certain types of shapes. So lastly, I want to show you just in this short video how you can go and save. You do have your save button up here. You can also do file, save, or save as. And when you save, it's actually, most of these software packages, they're going to have a default type of file. So for instance, here you can see GraphicScale has a .gal. If you're using a different program, it'll probably have a different file extension. But remember, the big thing here is you want to make sure that you save this original file because this is going to be the editable file that you're going to be able to come in and continue working on. Now, you can see it wants to save it in my downloads. I'm actually going to change this out here. And you might want to do something like this where maybe on your desktop or your documents, you create a new folder and maybe I call this MMC. 113 for instance and then double click on the folder and maybe we come in here and we call I, I don't know project one and then I save my file so now notice up in the corner here I have project one dot gale and so now I'd be able to come back in if I had to at a later point in time and reopen the project and continue working on it in future videos, we're going to go a little bit more into this interface, but also too, we're going to talk about as far as some of the different tool sets that you can work with to get started in designing and working in GraphicScale.